Well, good morning, Grace family. Good to see you all today. Uh, it is uh, last week we had Easter, and we had such a great crowd and, and, and uh, great service. We want to thank you for being back this week. We have a good crowd this morning as well. We have, you know, let, let me share a scripture with you. Psalm 118, 24 says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. This is a good day today. It's a good day today. And one reason it's a good day, because I have a special announcement to make. It, it, it was made last week. If by chance you were not here for our Easter service, you missed out on this, on this special announcement. And so the church has, has now have a new senior pastor. And I would like for you all to stand up with me and welcome. It's my great honor and privilege to welcome our new senior pastor, Pastor Patrick and Marlena Kitely. Please give them a great big hand. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, it's an honor and privilege to step into this assignment. We know it's a God thing, and we're just excited. The few times that we've come here, we just felt like, you know what? This is our people. <laughs> this is our family. This is our tribe. And so it's an honor and a privilege to be standing here on this day in this house. And I have my wonderful, beautiful wife, Marlena. We've been married 25 years now in last March. <laughs> and she is the great niece of a historic figure named Oscar Schindler. And so her, her maiden name is Schindler. And uh, so I like to go to Israel with her. We go to Israel every so often. And uh, there's special favor there in the country because his body's in Jerusalem, his grave is in Jerusalem, and so we have a chance to go there. But I wanted Marlene to come up and uh, say hello to y'all before we get going here and, uh, so, you know, give everyone a howdy. Hey. Y'all can have a seat. I don't want to keep y'all standing. Um, we are just so honored to be here. I know you guys don't know us too well, but you guys can follow us online, um, um, Patrick Kitely. That's his name on his social media, and you can get to know us a little bit more. And um, we are so excited to get to know all of you guys. The first time we ever came here, I just cried because I, we already loved everybody. And it's hard to explain. It's like, so our youngest daughter, I'll just say this, is adopted. So that's in our heart. So you guys are adopted. We're adopting you guys. And we're excited for you guys to adopt us. And... Um, Amen. I know you might not know a lot about us, but I do want to say that we are a testimony, our family, of um, reconciliation. And so if that's something that you're believing for, for this house or for your family, we want to partner with you to see God do restoration, to bring restoration to Grace, restoration to Colleen, restoration to your family, to your kids. <laughs> And we are a testimony of that, so I'm telling you to build your faith that God can do it. He's going to do it for you. He's going to do it for your family, and he's going to do it for grace. And we're so excited to be here and to be a part of this, of what God's going to do here, because it's going to be awesome. And there's great expectation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Preach, girl. Preach. <laughs> your turn. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, like my... And over the next, you know, we're, we're moving. We want to ask you to pray with us because we're just trying to find a location. We found a couple and we have our applications in. We're trying to move here at least by mid-May. And uh, I have a few commitments that I have and I want to keep my commitments. I've, I've done travel ministry uh, for the last eight, nine years. And uh, so I have a couple more commitments I got to fulfill. But uh, we're planning on moving here in May. We'll be back Mother's Day uh, and we're going to have a great time. In fact, if you know any mothers in the community, invite them. Your aunties, your grandmamas, your friends, whoever in the grocery store. Bring them here because we're going to have a great day on Mother's Day. Uh, and it's going to be great. And then as we step into June, we're going to be sharing vision. And God's going to do amazing things. June 11th is going to be the installation service. And we're going to have a lot of friends come in from all over the place. You'll get to meet 
our friends and family, and they'll get to meet our new friends and family here in, in Grace. Amen? And so we're really excited about that. And by the way, I'm just going to throw a little secret in. If you serve in any capacity in the church in May, we're just setting it up with Jackie now. In May, we're going to have a core group meeting. And if you serve, I'll tell you, we love to meet with a core group, share heart, share inside scoops of what God, we feel God is doing, have Q&As, a real time of fellowship. So we're going to be planning that as well uh, going forward. That's my son-in-law, by the way, Gabriel on the on the keys, and uh, don't mind him, he's a Houston Astros fan, and uh, are there any other Astros fans here? Okay. Any Yankee fans here? No, any Re Rangers fans here? Okay. Any Cowboys fans here? Is Brother Lionel here? Can you please come here, sir? So I go, I, we came in this, uh, this, at the end of this last week, and I came into the office, and they were the new office, and I looked on the desk, and on the desk, you know, I'm from California, and uh, I don't go around saying that in Texas, because we lived in Georgia for seven years, so you don't tell people you're from California, because they say, don't California my Texas, I've seen those t-shirts. <laughs> my two favorite t-shirts are, don't California my Texas, and then... Uh, American until sex, Texas secedes, and so those are the ones I've seen, but um, <laughs> it's hilarious. But, uh, but we're originally from the San Francisco Bay Area, and I'm not an Oakland Raiders fan. Is that okay? And, uh, and I'm not a Dallas Cowboys fan. I'm just, you know what? The, the scripture says, confess your faults one to another. That you may be healed, all right? We live three minutes right now from the star. And so I, I'm like there. And there's a, there's a sports anointing that's on our lives, and I'll tell you more about that another time. But uh, since we've been there, the Dallas Cowboys did make it back to the playoffs. And uh, so it's just proximity. It's proximity <laughs> of the anointing, the sports anointing. But I came here. Hello, my brother. I came here this week, and I went to my new desk. And on the desk, there are four keys that were given to me and a beautiful keychain. And it was provided with a special note from our brother, Brother Lionel. And it was a Dallas Cowboys keychain. <laughs> <clears throat> when the Raiders left Oakland, I became a San Francisco 49ers fan. And there was a guy named Joe and another guy named Jerry and a running back named Roger, and another guy who was as mean as it gets, Ronnie, who lost top tips of fingers in the middle of the game, kept on playing. And that's what I grew up with because that's where I was, and we were winners. And it was just amazing, just winning Super Bowl after Super Bowl after Super Bowl after Super Bowl. <laughs> so I was a 49ers fan. I was a 49ers fan. But I came here, and he knows this. He knows this, but he provided me the keychain. And I'm going to honor that keychain, and I'm going to use that keychain, and I'm going to believe with you. <laughs> that at least there can be an opportunity to go into the second round, okay? Uh, but uh, can we have fun? We'll have fun, okay? But I went, and since we're handing out presents here, I got you a present. So I'm going to let you go ahead and, and just pull that present out. I went to Black Rifle Coffee and got you a Dallas Cowboys bag of coffee. Yeah. Love you. Love you too, sir. <laughs> thank you. Here you go. Here thank you go. You so well, thank you. Let's give him a hand. Amen. <laughs> now, one thing you're going to learn about us is we love Jesus, and we love flowing in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Some call him the comforter. Some call him the paraclete. Some call him Holy Spirit. We do too. But sometimes it's just the Holy Ghost. Like the old song used to say, there's something about the Holy Ghost I can't explain. I got it in my hands. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I got it in my feet. I got it all over me. And so, and so we, love, we love the Holy Ghost. But also we love to have fun and smile and laugh in the house of God. Is that okay? And, uh, and, and that's, what, that's what people are going to come in here. They're going to feel real 
people. That's what the community, when they come into grace, they feel real. How many know what I'm talking about? How many are down folk? Real people, amen? And so, and so I just, we just love it here, and uh, I thank God for this assignment that God has given us, and we look forward to the days in front of us to get to know y'all. And so at the end of the service today, and it's not, maybe not everyone can fit in on this, because I'm going to be here this Sunday and, and then Sunday for Mother's Day. Those two Sundays, what we want to do is I, we want to take, Marlene and I want to take a picture with each and every one of you. And so we have, there's a picture wall. It's, it's in the middle right here. And uh, that's right, by the cross. And, uh, and, and we want to take a picture with you all. So we want to make a line at the end of the service if we can, and we're just going to smile. I'll just say our names, and then we'll move to the next people. We want to greet you, and what we want to do is this. For the installation service, we're making a special presentation, and so we want everybody's pictures in the presentation as possible, and so we might even, you know, be able to get it. I don't think we can get it all today, but maybe the next Sunday if we have to add another one, but we want to get your pictures and with you and just smile and just love everybody. Amen? And uh, we look forward to, we love relationship. And we love good food. Hint, hint, all right? <laughs> and we love hanging out. We were, we were with Scott and Jackie last night for four and a half hours just breaking bread and having chicken. And they can cook and she can bake. And, uh, and so, and just that's what this is all about. Amen. Is building relationships. So give us grace, grace, give us grace because I am blonde and it is real. And so you have to tell me your name every time you see me for at least two or three times. But we want to get to know everybody and build relationship. And we're in this, we're in it. Amen. And uh, we're so thankful. We brought our whole family with us. So. It's going to be powerful. Amen. Well, why don't you go ahead and stand with me for the reading of the word. Are you ready for the word today? Yes. We're going to have a good time. There's an anointing in this place. Amen. There's a powerful anointing in this place. Can somebody say amen? amen. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. In fact, why don't you look at somebody beside you, get your finger out, your prophetic bony finger out, and point it in their face and tell them, I am so thankful that you are no longer who you used to be. And after today, you're not going to be who you were when you came in. You're going out different. You're moving from faith to faith, from strength to strength, and from glory to glory and that is going to be your story. Amen. Be seated, be seated, be seated. Actually, we're standing for the word. Sorry, stand up. You're going out different. You're going out different. And you're moving from faith to faith and from what? Strength to strength and from glory to glory. And that's going to be your story. Amen. We're going to read from 1 Samuel. I'm going to take something familiar. We're in an hour where everything that is familiar is becoming strange. And everything strange seems like it's becoming familiar. But I want to take a familiar story in Scripture and read 1 Samuel 16, verses 1 through 13. We're going to read a few verses here for a moment. And we're going to read from the New Living Translation. So we're going to put it on the screen for you. And that's what I love to do, just put it on the screen so we can all read together. Are you ready? Let's do this. Now the Lord said to Samuel, you have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. What does Bethlehem mean? House of bread, right? Remember we shared that last time. Find a man named Jesse who lives there. For I have selected one of his sons to be my king. Watch this. But Samuel asked, how can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Take a heifer with you. The Lord replied and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. 
and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. Watch this. So Samuel did as the Lord instructed. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town came, trembling to meet him. What's wrong, they asked. Do you come in peace? Yes, Samuel replied. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice too. Watch this. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, Surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see. Somebody say see. see. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Somebody say looks. looks. Verse, the next verse. Then Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, this is not the one the Lord has chosen. Next, Jesse summoned Shimei. But Samuel said, neither is this the one the Lord has chosen. Verse 9, in the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Watch this. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one, anoint him. Watch this. So, da so as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil, and the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Ramah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that this is holy ground. We thank you, Lord, that in this place there's a fresh anointing. We thank you that the anointing destroys the yoke, and it lifts the burden. And I thank you today for an anointing on our eyes, on our ears, on my mouth. I pray, Lord, today that you will open up our, the eyes of our understanding, the eyes of our heart, and the perceptions of our mind, God. We thank you for an enlightening to take place. Let the light turn on in this city, we pray in Jesus' name. And somebody said... Now, before you sit down, before you sit down, that's a lot of Scripture reading, I know, but get your prophetic bony finger out one more time. And tell the person beside you, I'm so thankful that what you just went through did not kill you. The past is behind you, and the best is in front of you, because God still has this. Amen. Be seated if you can. Somebody say, God still has this. Sometimes you have to make that declaration, right? I go around the world saying, you know what, i got to tell somebody, God still has this. Yeah. And you ought to make that declaration over your life, over your house, over your family. God still has this. See, somebody needs to hear this. Can you believe it? In April, it's already April, 2023, God still has this. And i got an announcement for somebody. The enemy has not taken over. This is not a runaway train. Can I talk to you up in here? The enemy might to try to come against you one way, but my Bible says that the, he's going to flee before you seven ways. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord is going to raise up a standard against it. And so I got an announcement that God to speak over this house, over this city, to the principalities that are trying to rule in this atmosphere, and over this state, and over this nation, and over the earth, we have an announcement that God is still in control, and he's still in charge, and I got an announcement for somebody else, God's grace is sufficient for you, and you cannot be good enough to earn it, 
and you cannot be bad enough to lose it, his grace is sufficient for you. It works in the obscure places of our life where we feel unworthy. It works in our lives where we feel broken. It works in our lives where we feel like we have limitations on us. But when God's grace comes upon your life, there are no limits. There are no boundaries. There's an increase all around you, and God still has this. Can I speak this in this house today? Can I speak it into your body, into your marriage, into your children, into your family, into your finances, into your whole world? God still has this. And when you get that revelation, then all of a sudden you have a reason to worship. Does anyone in this room have a reason to worship? We're not just up here, the worship team's not just up here just singing songs. Come on, somebody. And just going through song sets. This is, you have a reason to worship. You've been forgiven much. You've been loved much. You've been healed. You've been set free. Is there somebody knows what I'm talking about? And so this, this moves beyond, when we begin to worship, this moves beyond just singers and songs and musicians and all the bells and whistles that we have in church. Come on now. Worship is different than that. Worship is not my obligation. It's my occupation. I was born to worship. And so worship is not a music style. It's a lifestyle. And worship is what I do, come on, with every single breath because the Scripture says, let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. And so I was born to worship, and when I worship, it releases my soul. You see, we're talking about a worshiper here today named David, and in Psalm 22 and verse 3, he wrote this psalm. He just sat on his harp, and he began to sing, and he declared, You are holy, you who are enthroned. You who inhabit the praises of Israel. You see, God inhabits your praises. He dwells in the atmosphere. When you begin to praise, If you, wherever you are, if you're going through it, if you're feeling depressed or confused or you're just feeling weight on your life, praise your way through. Come on now. Like my friend Marvin Sapp would sing, he said, sometimes you have to praise him in advance. You have to give the sacrifice of praise because guess what? When you begin to praise God, he shows up. And when he shows up, anything can happen. When God shows up, the enemy has to scatter. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Somebody say, God God is up in here. Does anyone have a reason to worship in this place? So we're talking about a worshiper named David. We know the story of David. He would worship God in the backfield. And when he learned to worship God, he started going, he was training for the reigning. Sometimes God allows you to go through certain seasons to prepare you for what he has in front of you. And thank God he doesn't give it all to you at once. And so David had to learn how to kill lions and bears and giants, oh my. And he learned how to deal with lions in the backfield. It's interesting, how many love to watch National Geographic? Do you like to watch those ones where the animals, the lions are creeping up on the antelope and there's this voice, and here is the the female lion in her natural habitat. And she is crouching and moving towards a herd of antelope. You ever watch those? I mean, the voice is nice, the music is nice, but you're waiting for the action. Where all of a sudden, the antelope begin to run and the lion begins to run. And one of the things you'll find is the lion will come up and rah, and grab usually a stray or sick antelope and take them down. And what do you learn about lions? Lions attack from behind. You see, God wants to, this is what's happening with David, and God wants to do this in our life. He wants us to learn how to conquer enemies in our blind spots in the places that we cannot see. 
enemies that come up from behind to take us out, our weak spots, our unseen parts. And the enemy has one desire. Can I speak this to somebody and give you a secret? He wants to kill you. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come in John 10, 10, that you may have life and life more abundantly. He learned how to kill lions, and then he learned how to kill bears. So have you ever watched bears attack? They attack differently. They don't attack from behind. They attack, attack in front of you with their big bear claw. There's a, I think there's a restaurant here called Black Bear. I'll meet you there for breakfast. And they have a big breakfast, by the way. But God said, I want you not only to deal with, this is David, he's preparing, he's training for the reigning. I want you to not only deal with enemies that attack from behind, but I want you to attack, deal with enemies that attack you from the front. Not the things you can't see, but the things that you can see. The things that you're dealing with undealt with stuff that you know about, that we overlook, that we don't pay attention to. I want to deal with bears of pornography, men. I have one amen from a man. <laughs> I want to deal with bears, come on somebody, of lust, of gossip, that come and you can see them coming. But God says, I want you to learn, if you're ever going to get to a level where you're going to kill giants, I, got you, I need you to deal with enemies that attack from behind and in front of you because what I'm causing to rise up in this time is what I call the rise of the giant killers. Now, I'm from Oakland, California, so we would probably say oh, giant killers with the A and the S on the back end, but the rise of the giant killers. Those ones that God's causing to rise up in this time are the unlikely, the underdog, the off the radar, the, the, the ones who are hidden in obscurity. God says, I'm going to cause you to rise up because you have been dealing with lions and bears in the backfield and learning how to worship in this place because I need a company of people in a place called Colleen next to a place called Fort Hood. Or is it Fort Cavesos? Let's just call it Fort Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Fort Holy Ground. <laughs> and all this region here, I'm causing a company of people to rise up, giant killers who are going to rise up in this hour. And I have a prophetic word that giants are falling. Can I speak it from this pulpit to the nations of the earth? in this time because there are going to be some prize, surprises and shock and awe are going to come upon some people because like Psalm chapter 2, the scripture says that the, the nations and the kings, they're imagining vain things against the Lord and his anointed, but he who sits in the heaven laughs and he's going to put them in derision. And he looks at his son and he looks at his people and he says, ask for the nations. What, what, what would you ask for? I love how it says in, in the message, he, he says, hey, son, it's your birthday. And I want to give you a present. What would you like? Would you like the nations? Would you ask for the nations. One of the things that I've learned as we've begun to, to, to get into this body is Pastor Terry and Pastor Jan, the nations were inside of them. And the nations, come on somebody, are a part of the DNA of this house. And so one thing we have to continue to ask for and continue the prayer that they were praying is this, is give us the nations. And guess what? The nations are gathering in this room. 
And there's impact to nations that not only through missions, but through your lives of people that are all over the world. And I got an announcement to the church. I got an announcement to the world. I got an announcement to government leaders and kings and presidents and prime ministers and, and nations. I have an announcement for the business sector and the finance sector and the entertainment world. There's an announcement that we need to declare in this time that, 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 that God is the one who's alive things up. It's not man. Come on, somebody. It's not people. It's not the earth. And it's God who is doing it. It's not the other way around. So if you listen to CNN and his evil twin, Fox, Uh uh-oh, am I stepping on some toes here? They're both, one, one seems like it's going this way, one's going this way, but actually they're both just coming down around and meeting each other. It's the media. And media is no longer its own mountain. It's been moved to entertainment. It's a choice of what entertainment you want to listen to. But guess what? It's lies, 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 lies. And so I'm sorry if you, if you don't like it, but Fox, Jesus called, come on, somebody, his enemy a fox. I'm just seeing where I'm doing a litmus test up in here. And somehow we go on the other side, and CNN sounds like sin. Okay, okay. So I'm not, I'm not signing up for either one. I want to know the news from heaven. And so one of the things that we need to be, this is going to be a prophetic house. One of the things you brought with this pastor is I'm a prophet to the nations. And sometimes a little bit of a wild man because I just, we just prophesy the word of the Lord. And we prophesy with integrity, but we prophesy the word of the Lord. We prophesy over people. We all prophesy over nations. And sometimes there'll be an anointing in this place to speak over the nations. Because when, like I was listening to my friend the other day, and he said, when you preach, you're not just preaching to the congregation, and you're not just preaching to the city, but the principalities and powers show up to church too. Because they need to hear the inside scoop from heaven too. And because they need to know how to attack us. And de- demons show up at church. <laughs> And so we're making announcements in this room and letting them know that actually the kingdoms of this world are going to become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, and he's going to reign forever and ever. Okay, let me preach my verse. He was soapboxing. In 1 Samuel 16... Is a very powerful text because there is this unspoken need in the nation for something different. Woo! Israel needed something different. An answer was needed. Has there ever been a time in the earth in history where we need some answers? And what was was not working again. And the rule of King Saul, man's choice, came to an end. And so God spoke to the prophet Samuel, whose name means asked of God, basically an answer to prayer. And he raises up this prophet from his childhood as one who would hear God's voice. He was the eye ministry in a time where the Scripture says in 1 Samuel chapter 1, where the Scripture says there was no open vision. He was the ear ministry in a time frame when no one could hear the word of the Lord. He was the mouth ministry in a time when no one was speaking as an oracle of God. He was the one who was the bridge ministry between the era of the book of Judges and the era of the kings and the prophets. He was the one who was the last judge and the first prophet bridging a new era. 
And God tells him this. And you might know this story, but I want to drop some things in here because God's about to do something powerful. An anointing is going to come upon your life personally today. And so in the scripture, God says, hey, Sam. Now, if you read your scripture, your Bible, you feel like you know people. I've been walking with these people for a long time. So Abraham, that's Abe. You know what I'm talking about? And, and Paul, that's like money P. You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, and, 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 so, and so you look at Sam like, Sam, God speaks to Samuel. And he says, Samuel, I want you to go down to Bethlehem to the house of Jesse, and your assignment is to fill your horn with oil because I want to have you anoint the next king for Israel. And Samuel goes with a preconceived paradigm of what a king looks like. He goes down there and God says, guess what? I have rejected Saul as king. In 2023 vernacular, Saul is played out. He's run his course. And so something new has to arise in this time. And so Samuel arrives in Bethlehem, the house of bread. He arrives there. And he sees these wonderful prospects among Jesse's sons. And Samuel's mind starts clicking. And he says, yep, that guy looks like he could be the one. And he's looking on the surface. He's looking at their charisma. He's looking at their good looks. He's looking at their stature. He's looking in all the natural ways, and he's thinking in his mind, oh, he would make a great king, and he would make a great king, and that guy could make a great king. And as Samuel is sizing up the sons of Jesse, God shows up one more time. And he says to the prophet Samuel, hold it. It's amazing how God will do that. He, 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 when he wants to do something, he does not want us to get into the way. And the more we can say, God, have your way, do your thing. Come on, somebody. Have you ever prayed a prayer like that, by the way? God, have your way in my, that's dangerous. Do what you have to do. Be careful praying that prayer. But Samuel is sizing him up, and God says, here's the thing. And he speaks, he says, Sam, you're looking on the outward appearance. And that's not how I estimate things. That's not how I work things. You need to get your eyes off the outward And you need to see how I see, because what I see is not based on outward appearance. And I love this verse because it's amazing in the scripture where it says, man looks, somebody say looks, on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks, somebody say looks, on the heart. The word looks in the Hebrew is yaira. Sound familiar? Jaira. Jehovah Jireh. You go to Genesis chapter 22 and verse 14, and Abraham is on the mountain taking his son up the mountain, and he he lifts up the, the, the knife to take his son's life because he was just trying to obey what God said to him, and all of a sudden there's a ram in the bush And he names that place in verse 14, he names that place Jehovah, Yehovah, Yaira. And Yaira is interesting in the Hebrew because Jaira, it means to see. God looks, Yaira, Yahweh, Yairas. He looks. But the word, it's interesting in that scripture in Genesis 22 because looks means to foresee. Foresee speaks of prevision. And prevision causes God to move in provision. 
So you look at Eira, and it basically means it's, he's the God, Jehovah, which Jehovah in the Hebrew, I'll break this down another time, means the becoming one. Basically, God becomes what you need when you need it. And so if you need shalom, he becomes shalom. If you need a healing, he becomes Rapha. That's what Jehovah means, the becoming one. But in this scripture, Jehovah, Jehovah becomes Yaira. He's the one who sees because he sees, he, he foresees, and because he foresees, he has prevision. And because he has prevision, he gives provision for your life, and he stands on the mountain. And he looks and sees the journey of your life and where it's headed. And he says, you need a provision here. You need a provision here. You need a provision here. I am the God who provides all of your needs. Somebody say, Yaira. And so he basically says this. Here's the thing. This old method doesn't work. Man looks on the outward appearance, the strengths, the looks, the abilities. The America's got talent it factor, but God looks on the heart. God says this. I want you to catch this. I'm looking at things totally different, different than you are. It's totally different. It's, totally, it's, it's a whole different thing, and it might shock you how I view things because you've got to understand something, says the Lord, that what's coming requires something different. What you're about to step into, I'm the God who stands on the mount, and I'm making provisions. What you're about to step into requires, is calling for something different. I'm not looking at outward no more. I'm looking at heart. What's going to qualify you in the kingdom is heart. Yeah, the gift may make room for you, but it's the character, it's the integrity, it's the heart that's going to keep you there. Gift opens doors. Come on, somebody. Esther. Gift cute opens doors, Esther. But calling keeps you there. Character keeps you there. Character causes you to level up in a whole way that you've never leveled up before. And so in the scripture, watch this. I'm not going to be long because we're going to annoy some people up in here. Jesse parades his sons one by one by one in front of Samuel. And Samuel realizes that God is looking for something different. The brothers look good. And so Samuel says, no, 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 no. And guess what? No. And he looks at Jesse and says, do you have another son? Because I know something. God called me to come here. And he told me to fill my horn with oil. And so I have an assignment. And it's no, 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 no. See, somebody in this room has experienced the no's of God. But what do they say? Sometimes rejection is God's protection. How he takes care of you. And so sometimes the no is the best thing you can hear in the moment. It don't feel good. You're hoping something to come on, God. Let's let's come on. Let's let's do this. This is obviously the one. No, says the Lord. That's quite a prophecy right there. Thus says the Lord, I come to you, my daughter and my son. I love you so much. And my answer to you is no. And then you pray the prayer, how long? Is there another? Well, Jesse says, yeah, there's another son. Um, how do I describe him to you? Um, he's different. <laughs> he is in the field with the sheep, smells like sheep, sometimes sounds like sheep, and he plays this little harp. And he sings little tunes and little songs. 
And he doesn't fight like my, my other sons do. You know what I'm talking about? They got swords and spears and shields, and they know how to deal with armor. And this kid over here in the field, you, you sure he's different? Uh, he, 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 he has a little sling. He puts little stones in it and just kind of hits things. He's different. Can I talk to somebody up in here? He's just a little different. He, 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 I asked him what he's doing. He said, I'm, I'm worshiping. He's, he, he's, he's different. He uses different weapons. He's trained differently. He's different. And that is the moment when the prophet Samuel hears everything he needs to hear. What did you say? <laughs> he's different. Wait, did you say he's different? Yeah, he's different. You know what? Bring him here. I heard all I need to hear. He's different. In fact, we will not sit down to eat this beautiful fried chicken <laughs> and cheese and mac and collard green. I got a witness up in here. One thing you're going to learn about me is when I get hungry, I start preaching about food. <laughs> we will not sit down to eat until he arrives. Because I came here on, I didn't come here to have a meal. I came here on assignment. I didn't come, come on somebody. I have an assignment. My assignment is to anoint the next king of Israel. And when we anoint the next king of Israel, eras are changing. Things are are moving. And here comes the kid. He doesn't look like a giant killer. He looks like a kid. He's a teenager, maybe 15, 16, 17 years of age, scholars will say. But what arrives in the room is a giant killer. Somebody who's been training for the reigning. Somebody who's learned how to worship in the back field when nobody's looking. Somebody who's learned how to kill things, blind spots in his life. Things he can't see, trying to come up against him. Things that he can see. He's learned how to deal with those enemies. Here's the rise of the giant killer. See, I believe it's time for us to catch on to God's thinking. There's something different. Come on, somebody. And so... When he arrives, Samuel makes, he uses this phrase. And I want you to catch on to this phrase here as I move into the next set here. Because we're about to anoint some people with oil. I was with Pastor Jensen for the last five years. Pastor Jensen Franklin. And he doesn't say oil. He's from Georgia. He says oil. We're going to anoint you with oil. I was like, that's good. That's sound. That's sound. You know what I'm talking about? When somebody has an, like a British accent and they just begin to pray, it just sounds like even just more heavenly. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Pastor Jensen, he say, we're going to anoint you with oil. Like, that's, that's anointed right there. But God speaks these words to, to Samuel and he says, watch this. I want to prophetically declare this to your life, to your family, to your house everything that's yours. I want to prophetically declare this word that the Lord spoke to Samuel to this house grace and to the next era that we I like that we are moving into. What does he say? He says God speaks to him. He says this this is the one anoint him. Woo! He heard all these no's. And now God switches things up. Something different arrived. And he says, this is the one. Anoint him. See, your 2017 might have been a no. 18, no. 19, no. 20, no. For sure. 21, no. 
22 know, but somebody stepped into April 23. And there's a message from heaven that's coming down in this place. This is the one. Can somebody say that with me? This is the one. You've been waiting. You've been longing. You've been praying. You've been believing. You've been hoping against hope. And the Spirit of the Lord would come into this house and declare even Psalm 66, where the Scripture says, verse 10, 11, 12, around that area, begins to say, you know what? You've gone through seasons where you went through the flood. You went through the fire. Huh. Somehow God allowed men to ride over your heads like you were the ground and they were riding on their horses. They were riding right over you. You went through all these seasons. But the Scripture says, but thou hast brought us out into a wealthy place. And that word wealthy, place in the Hebrew, is Revaya. Revaya, that's a great name. I think somebody ought to name their baby Revaya. What's your baby name? Revaya. Revaya means a place of contentment, a place of satisfaction, and a place of fulfillment. See, God's causing you, come on somebody, this is the one, to step into a place of satisfaction, to step into a place of contentment, to step into a place of joy, to step into a place of victory, to step into a place of resolution. It's a new era. Can I make an announcement to somebody up in here? It's a new season. It's a time of breakthrough. It's a time where God says, I'm going to be an adversary to your adversaries now. I love that scripture where he says, I'm going to be an enemy to your enemies. Those who try to rise up against you, watch me become your defender. Watch me become your shield and your buckler. I'm going to work on your behalf. And so somebody, I want you to make this prophetic declaration on the count of three. This is the one. One, two, three. This is the one. Come on, that's a practice round. Let's do it again real loud. One, two, three. This is the one. Now, you need to get emphatic now and get your prophetic bony finger and, like, point it somewhere. Or maybe, I don't know what you need to do. But you need to make a declaration because I got to speak to somebody up in here that enough is enough. And every enemy and foe that has tried to come up against you has to go in the name of Jesus because I'm causing you to rise up. And when you rise up, you're rising up different because there's anointing coming upon your life that's changing everything. What do they always say? It's the anointing. It makes a difference. When the anointing shows up in your life, It makes a difference. It changes everything. When the anointing shows up in your life, it makes you different. Woo! Ready? This is the one. One more time. This is the one. And what does the scripture say? It says, God said to him, anoint him. Say, I got my oil. (laughs) And I love the scripture because in the presence of his father and his brothers, Samuel pours the horn of oil upon David's head. And the scripture ends like this. It says, and from that day forward. Woo, what's today? April the 16th, 2023. From that day. Day, whoo, I can feel this in this room. There's a shift taking place in somebody's life. From that day forward, things are going to be different. You are going to be different because of the anointing that comes upon your life. The scripture says from that day forward, the spirit of the Lord came upon David powerfully. 
There's a momentum. I said there's a momentum that's coming to this place, that's coming to this house, that's coming to your life. Every hindering force is coming down in the name of Jesus because of the anointing. Every foe, come on now, has to stop bothering you and harassing you and coming up against your kids because of the anointing. The anointing comes to make a difference. And there's an anointing that's in this place today that's shifting everything. Somebody say, this is the one. See, you got to go home and make an announcement. Go sit down at the table with your children and make an announcement with your grandchildren and make an announcement. Guess what? This is the one. Explain it to them. Go to your house. Walk into your rooms and say, this is the one. Go to work tomorrow this week, and make an announcement. Get there a little early. Make an announcement to the building, to the ground, to the air above, to the people up in there. They might not even know what you're talking about. Just tell them, this is the one. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. This is the one. Hey! Make an announcement to your health right now, to your body right now. This is the one. There's an anointing dropping in this place. Make an announcement to your wallet. Some of you, your money has gotten funny and your change has gotten strange. And you got to make an announcement in your purse. This is the one. Because of the anointing. Now watch this, and then what we're going to do is this. I have the ushers. They're going to line us up, and you're going to come. There's two assignments here before you leave. Two assignments. As long as you can, if you need to go, I get it. There's babies, there's children, and we love them all. And there's a couple hungry people. A couple people got to go to work. A couple people have assignments. I get it. But as many as possible. What we're going to do before you leave, we're going to have the ushers. We're going to bring up my wife and I. We're going to stand here. And we're just going to anoint you with oil. And this is not just uh, putting some oil on you. Things are changing. Yes. Things are shifting. Yes. Do you believe it? Yes. This is a holy moment. And so watch this. The scripture says this. Watch what it says. From that day for You know something? I, I, I'm speaking to younger generations. That's hip hop. I mean, this is just straight up lyrics that you could just start, start speaking. Hold, just stay right there. Stay right there. This is the one. Anoint him. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him powerfully. The Hebrew word for powerfully is a word that I spoke when I first came here before. It's the Hebrew word shalak. And the word shalak in the Hebrew Yes, I can preach from Genesis to Revolutions all day long. Shalak. Somebody say Shalak. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him powerfully. Shalak. Shalak means to accelerate. It means to the hand of God is upon your life and it pushes you forward. You move at the pace. You move at the pace that you can move with your own strength, energy, know-how, abilities. But there's something when God shalaks you, where he puts his hand on your life, and he accelerates you, and you move not under warp speed, but God's speed. And you begin to, 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 to begin to operate and move and favor comes upon you and blessing is released all around you because the spirit, because of the anointing, the spirit of the Lord comes upon you powerfully from that day forward. Let me, I'm going to close in prayer and then the ushers, we're just going to 
sweep everyone across from just like a, a tunnel, a fire tunnel, just going across, anointing oil tunnel, and just go across, and then I'm going to meet everybody that can. Here's your second assignment. That can stay to take pictures with us and want to smile and tell us your names. We want to try and meet as many people as possible. I'll get my chicken later. I don't care. We're here to be with y'all. This is family up in here, okay? And so that's the assignment. And so you can go ahead and put, is it Brother David? If you could put the, my, my, my worship song on. I have a song that I'm playing. It takes about two minutes to get to the words because there's this musical intro. But it's called, You Restore Everything. And we'll just put it on loop for the next, like, half hour. Just put it on replay. replay and we're just going to go. But when, I, when we pray for you, I'm going to use you two as the first example. We have a Cowboys Nation mask here. <laughs> come here, Marlena. Let's come right here. You stand on this side. I'll stand here. And you want you two to come forward. And then everyone else just follow suit. And what I want you to do is when we put the anointing oil on you, I want you to make the prophetic declaration over whatever is going on in your life and say, this is the one. Okay? And I'm going to practice it with you. I'm going to say it. You can all say it in the room together with me if you want for a little bit. And then we're just going to go through everybody. Or let's just do a test here. And everyone just say, this is the one. This is the one. You keep this on going. This is the one. Amen. This is the one. This is the one. Amen. This is the one. You can turn the music up just a little bit more. God bless you. We love you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. This is the one. This is the one. This is the one. This is the one. This is the one.